think if I we can agree. do something raw for the industry, it's then, important. then I it's get important. It. Like, mm-hmm. Because I think the industry does need need raw Some and they need something real. And Well, I guess everything happens for a reason because Victor wouldn't have cried. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Corey Hines. I am a coach, choreographer, and the social media director for Top Gun All-Stars in Miami, Florida. I was born and raised also in Miami, Florida. My name is Kristen Rosario, and I was born and raised in Miami, Florida as well. And I am the gym owner and founder of Top Gun All-Stars. My name is Mackenzie Johnson. Nick Hume. Jean Cameron. Crystal Blanco. Sanford Thomas. Jack Kidney. Sammy Martin. Lisa Morales. I grew up in Boynton Beach, Florida. Memphis, Tennessee. Miami, Florida. In Orlando, Florida. Cordial, Georgia. Columbus, Ohio. I also grew up in Miami, Florida. I would, I would absolutely say yes. Um, had different activities that I did. Did uh, 4-H at Amelia Earhart Park, which was all races. Was in a lot of different uh, after-school programs, gifted programs, AP programs like that, that supported diversity. Um, and, and was always taught, you know, just to, to get along, coexist, you know, look out for yourself. And, you know, there, there would be some things that you would face in life that you'd have to overcome. But at the end of the day, you treat everybody as equals. Growing up, my parents really taught me to just view everyone with intention and who they were as people, so I didn't really see it going on as much. This whole time has been very hard for even my family because we've never known a difference. Uh, Just ourselves, we're such a melting pot. It's never been a color, a race, an ethnicity, a culture. uh, It's just always been family. So I've it's been a wake-up call for me who's never seen anybody as anything other than what they are. When it comes to racial equality um, in a household, like a lot of the things I like to think of are like the parents and how they actually like, you know, raise their children and stuff. And so my mother like always kind of instilled us like everybody's a human, you know, kind of thing. Like treat everyone like you would want to be treated and that was kind of like the basis of everything. I did go to a Christian predominantly white high school so I didn't see anything horribly happen to me or my friends that were there but I would say that the white people kept separate and the black people did kind of keep separate unless those are the friends you really like grew up with or something like that. I mean I never even had that conversation with my mom until much later because I I saw that other people saw color so I was like mom I'm confused like with how people are seeing things because I don't see it the same way. I would say my parents always taught me to love people for the people that they are and growing up in the cheer community everybody was anything in the world so I just learned to love everybody. I wouldn't say as far as my race or my ethnicity, um, no, never, I've been very, very blessed. I've never really felt like I was made racially unequal because I just feel like I grew up in an area of Florida that was always pretty much equal, you know? I never really grew up with anything, race, sexual orientation getting in the way of me or who I'm friends with. I have not, personally. Yeah, I mean, I could say the same. I, a lot of people don't even think I have any Hispanic in me because I am like super white, light eyes, light features. Like, literally almost (laughs) every day, it's actually, It's like weird because at this point in my life in which I can probably say for a lot of black people, it is just the norm, like you get looked at different. Uh, um, There's been quite a few times where I felt, you know, racial, there, you know, some type of inequality with race. Um, Growing up in Cordial, Georgia, it's a very Southern town. So, there's a lot of, you know, backwardsness, things that aren't, you know, pushing the boundaries of time and stuff like that. In Miami, few and far between, it, it has happened before. Um, you know, you hear a little whisper here and there, or, you know, I'm six foot three and I'm black. So sometimes, you know, wearing the wrong outfit sometimes will make people, you know, walk in a different direction or, and it's things that you kind of just had to like. So. Being called things 
is always one of the most hurtful things because it doesn't hurt. Like, it, it, there's no physical damage, you know, there's nothing to prove that you got hurt, but it's you, you know, feeling that energy that somebody could give you when you can only give out kindness. You. It sucks, but, um, you try to grow from it and you try to show people who you are. And I think I try to be authentically loud so that you hear me and you see me as non-threatening or you see that I can bring some sort of value or you like, I'm, I'm constantly having to prove either through the humor or my worth that I'm not a threat. And I think it's it's something that was a long time developing and it took a while to do, but I mean, you you toughen your skin a little bit and you put on the face that you have to, to wear and you push. So I This is where my waking up has come from. And that's from. that's something I wanna ask you. Like we Because for me, Corey's just family. So when you say like I don't look However, okay, you got what do you think is the problem with that? You got me on that one. Yeah. I mean, I was saying this earlier, like, in society, like, there are just such stereotypes that are given to each ethnicity or, or just anybody that is different than the standard white, as some people would describe that. So it's just, it's engraved in a lot of our minds that one person has to look cer a certain way to be a certain race. And I, I you caught me there because I, I catch myself all the time thinking that because I don't even realize that I'm doing it. And I think that's such a big problem across the country is that people don't even realize what they're doing. I was put into that category my whole life. I always saw myself as a black woman, like that's what I am. And I identify with any other black woman on the street. But when I was growing up, I used to, um, people used to be like, oh my gosh, you have such pretty hair for a black girl. You're so pretty for a black girl. You talk so white. You, when, that just means like, like, I don't know what that means. Like I am just being myself. Equality is everything. Like we're not, the stereotypes are just a thing that we should not be a part of anymore. Like just because you're black, you won't do this. Because you're white, you do that. Like you need to know someone and like their heart and everything before you really judge someone. And I feel like that was what they were teaching everyone else about everything. It comes to stereotypes because that's pretty much what the all kind of, it puts it all together. Um, jokes can go so far, jokes are funny, blah, blah, blah. It could be fun, but you never know who's listening. You never know who could hear it and how they hear it. Mm -hmm. And those things can be hurtful. And if you can say something that can hurt somebody, you should probably think twice about it. I'm gonna be really honest. I think it's how you're raised. At the end of the day, if you don't change this, you can't change this. If you can teach people to not see color, then that person can teach someone else. And you can like be the change in this world, you know? You can't fix pain with hate. It just creates more hate. The only way you can fix it is with love. For instance, by me seeing what he's been going through has only grown my love for him and has made me want to hug him more. It makes me want to hug the world, but by letting him know that he matters and that I love him and that what's happening in the world, it hurts for me, but that here, he will never ever be treated for anything less than what he is. I think that's a step in the right direction. And that's what needs to happen everywhere, but it has to start at home. It has to start in your heart. Growing up, while we covered different aspects of history, the aspect of racism was truthfully put off to the side. And it's just looking at it now, if it was taught younger, regardless of the households the kids are coming from and the influences they're getting from outside sources, our education system should teach them because for me, I had two parents who taught me equality. It, it, it breaks me to know that anybody could treat him other than anything amazing. If I would say one thing to the cheer industry, like please, like if you see black talent, put it out there. 
when I looked into the, like the big gyms and like just you know just the bigger names it was just like I never saw me I didn't see me on the map with like just you know those just those big names like I saw when I first started to see like Angel Rice I started to feel represented like around that time I was like okay well then I can I can do this if she can do this like I would say for example Renaya she's on LJ she's the first black flyer on LJ to my knowledge so far but that that is amazing to me and no one understands the impact she's having on black girls right now it is so crazy i am so proud of her but you know jade you know the bounce back girl like she's she's tight like that's a bad girl like she she does her job like she's amazing and i was surprised when the mom told me she was like my daughter she didn't want to be on lj till she saw you she wanted to be you and she was like i've never seen her want to be so great and want to work so hard until she saw you on that mat and it made me feel just so just like it just made me feel like all my hard work had already like actually you know like gone into like fruition because i didn't see myself i saw my sister and she made me want to do it but i didn't think i could be on true athletics i didn't think i could be at TG or California until I just like started to see them way later on and then now that I was able to be that for just one little black girl it made me feel like I at least had done something for somebody. Communication is something that across the board and especially within the industry and just in our day-to-day -day and with social media we have lost the ability to do. Supporting the community as a whole and just letting them know that we're there like as allies and everything like just continuing to educate yourself not being silent and letting people know that it's present and that it needs to be addressed and basically i believe that there should be consequences for these actions our, our governing body and chair should have a whole aspect that comes with this especially with social media and people wanting to voice their negativity and hate then you shouldn't be allowed in our sport um talk about it don't be afraid to talk Sometimes when people are afraid, you don't get to the root of the problem. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to your kids and, and find out how they're feeling. Let them have a moment to voice as well. I think, um, if anything, this has all taught me that I'm not as educated as I would like to be. And it's because I've been so blessed to grow up in my bubble of, a, of, of this melting pot, right? So I didn't realize how the rest of the world may be. And I'm now learning and educating myself that not only are things different in different places, but I can do this, this, and this to make it even better here than what it was before. If it's still going on, like they need to know that someone is behind them having their back, like just not seeing you, they're seeing you more than your skin. Like we know that there's more to you this, than your skin color. Like you're important, you're loved, you matter. And like, even though it can't do everything, it can help move on to help other people do the same thing to help them go forward and then other people can hopefully follow. Education is a great first step, but we also have to work on being able to communicate and listen to what someone is saying. Because if I just talk and you just talk, if I just talk and she just talks, we're not going anywhere. But today I listened, and today she listened. And I think we're that much better for it. I hope you know how much support you have, and you know, at the end of the day too, in life, there's gonna be negativity and there's gonna be hate, but you provide such a beautiful, beautiful example of what a good human being and a good person should be so i hope you really know that your impact is remembered for a lifetime i think we can all agree that the cheer and dance industry has done a great effort in making their gyms and programs feel like homes for their athletes and even though we feel safe within the four walls of our program there is an overwhelming issue that has arisen. What can we do as an industry to combat the fears and injustices that so many of our athletes, coaches, workers, and choreographers feel on a daily basis? Be inclusionary and accepting. Educate ourselves and others. Celebrate our diversities and our differences. Be vocal and speak out against you. At the end of the day, 
if you don't change this, you can't change this.